Ever wished you could peek into someone's mind? The audiobook, The Art of Mind Reading, Genius Strategies to Read People Like a Pro, unveils the strategies to do just that. You'll master strategies like the situational prism, decoding true intentions in any setting. From subtle eye movements to vocal shifts, you'll uncover hidden emotions and thoughts. Imagine navigating social and professional situations with newfound confidence, forming deeper connections, and gaining a competitive edge. Without these skills, you'll continue to misread crucial cues, potentially damaging relationships and missing career-changing opportunities. Don't risk being manipulated or left in the dark. Unlock the secrets of human behavior and never feel socially blind again. Before we continue, make sure to subscribe to Grow to the Top and activate notifications to receive more self-improvement tips that will supercharge your growth. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you for your support. Chapter 1 Introduction to Mind Reading Have you ever wished you could peek inside someone's mind, unraveling their thoughts and emotions with uncanny precision? Welcome to the fascinating world of mind reading. Not the mystical parlor trick, but a science-backed approach to understanding human behavior. This book will equip you with powerful strategies to decipher the unspoken language of others, transforming you into a master of human interaction. As you embark on this journey, you'll gain an initial understanding of key concepts that form the foundation of mind reading. You'll develop a basic ability to interpret nonverbal cues and situational context, sharpening your situational awareness to levels you never thought possible. These skills will serve as your compass in navigating the complex terrain of human behavior. But this is just the beginning. With continued practice, you'll find yourself developing an enhanced proficiency in reading people. You'll gain deeper insights into emotional states and intentions, allowing you to connect with others on a profound level. This newfound ability will strengthen both your personal and professional relationships, opening doors to opportunities you might have previously missed. Understanding others is not just a neat party trick. It's a crucial life skill. By enhancing your social interactions, you'll find yourself building stronger, more meaningful connections with those around you. In the professional sphere, this skill can be a game changer, helping you navigate office politics, negotiate more effectively, and lead with greater empathy and insight. Mind reading techniques encompass a wide range of skills, from situational awareness to interpreting nonverbal cues and vocal tones. Each chapter in this book will introduce you to a new facet of this art, building your skills step by step. Consistent practice is key. The more you apply these techniques in your daily life, the more intuitive and effortless they'll become. The order of chapters in this book is carefully designed to provide a logical progression of learning. We'll start with foundational skills before moving on to more advanced techniques. This approach ensures that you build a solid base of knowledge and experience, allowing you to tackle more complex aspects of mind reading with confidence. As we delve into these powerful techniques, it's crucial to address the ethical considerations of mind reading. While these skills can greatly enhance your understanding of others, they must be used responsibly and with respect for privacy. The goal is not to manipulate or exploit, but to foster genuine understanding and connection. As we conclude this introduction, you might be wondering about the mysterious, situational prism mentioned in the next chapter. What could this intriguing concept reveal about the art of mind reading? Prepare to have your perception of human interaction transformed as we embark on this enlightening journey together. Chapter 2. Situational Prism Imagine you're watching a movie, but you've only been shown a single frame. Without the full context, it's nearly impossible to understand the true meaning of what you're seeing. This is precisely the challenge we face when trying to read people without considering the full picture. Enter the situational prism, a powerful tool that will revolutionize your ability to understand others. But what exactly is this situational prism? Think of it as a lens through which you view human behavior, one that takes into account the myriad factors that influence how people act and react. 
It's not just about what you see on the surface. It's about understanding the intricate web of circumstances that shape each interaction. The importance of this concept in reading people cannot be overstated. Without it, you risk falling into the trap of misinterpretation, potentially damaging relationships, or missing crucial information. By considering context, you dramatically enhance your accuracy in understanding others, allowing you to navigate social situations with newfound clarity and insight. Context, in this sense, is far more than just the physical environment. It encompasses a wide range of factors that can influence behavior. Environmental elements certainly play a role. A person might act differently in a formal business meeting compared to a casual coffee shop. But situational factors go much deeper. They include the person's current emotional state, recent experiences, cultural background, and even the time of day. Consider this. You notice a colleague at work seems distracted and irritable. Without context, you might assume they're upset with you or dissatisfied with their job. But what if you knew they had been up all night with a sick child? Suddenly, their behavior takes on a completely different meaning. This is the power of the situational prism in action. One of the most common pitfalls in reading people is jumping to conclusions based on limited information. We're wired to make quick judgments, a survival instinct from our evolutionary past. But in our complex modern world, these snap judgments often lead us astray. The situational prism helps us pause, gather more information, and consider alternative explanations before forming our interpretations. So how can we apply this concept in real life? Start by cultivating a habit of curiosity. When you observe behavior that seems odd or out of character, resist the urge to immediately judge. Instead, ask yourself, what might be happening in this person's life that I can't see? What external factors could be influencing their behavior? Let's explore a real-life scenario to illustrate this point. Imagine you're at a networking event, and you notice someone standing alone in the corner, barely engaging with others. Your first impression might be that they're antisocial or arrogant. But let's apply the situational prism. Perhaps this person is an introvert who finds large gatherings overwhelming. Maybe they've just received some troubling news and are preoccupied, or it could be their first time at such an event and they're feeling out of their depth. By considering these possibilities, you open yourself up to a more accurate understanding of the situation. You might approach this person differently, offering them a friendly conversation or a quieter space to talk. This not only helps you avoid misinterpreting their behavior, but also allows you to respond in a way that's more likely to create a positive interaction. Developing your situational prism isn't just about avoiding misinterpretations, it's about enhancing your overall ability to connect with others. When you demonstrate an understanding of context, people are more likely to feel seen and understood. This can lead to deeper, more meaningful relationships in both personal and professional spheres. As you practice using the situational prism, you'll find that it becomes second nature. You'll start to automatically consider context in your interactions, leading to more nuanced and accurate readings of people. This skill will serve you well in negotiations, conflict resolution, leadership roles, and everyday social situations. Remember, the goal isn't to become a mind reader in the mystical sense, but to develop a more comprehensive and compassionate understanding of human behavior. The situational prism is your first step towards this goal, providing a foundation for the more advanced techniques we'll explore in the coming chapters. As we conclude our exploration of the situational prism, you might be wondering about the intriguing concept of the behavior blueprint mentioned in the next chapter. What hidden insights might this mysterious tool reveal about the people around you? Prepare to delve deeper into the art of mind reading as we uncover the secrets of baseline behavior. Chapter 3, Behavior Blueprint. Imagine you're an architect tasked with renovating a historic building. Before you can make any changes, you need a detailed blueprint of the existing structure. This blueprint serves as your reference point, allowing you to identify what's original and what's been altered over time. In the art of reading people, we have a similar tool at our disposal, the behavior blueprint. 
But what exactly is this mysterious blueprint, and how can it revolutionize your ability to understand others? At its core, the behavior blueprint is about establishing a baseline, a fundamental understanding of how a person typically behaves in various situations. It's like creating a personalized map of someone's normal patterns, quirks, and tendencies. The importance of this concept in reading people cannot be overstated. Without a reliable baseline for comparison, it's nearly impossible to accurately interpret changes in behavior. It's like trying to spot a spelling error in a foreign language you don't understand. Without knowing what's normal, how can you identify what's out of place? So, how do we go about creating this blueprint? It starts with careful observation. Think of yourself as a detective, gathering clues about a person's typical behavior. Pay attention to how they speak, their body language, their facial expressions, and their habitual responses to different situations. This isn't about making judgments. It's about creating a neutral, factual record of their usual patterns. As you build this blueprint, you'll start to notice certain consistencies. Perhaps your colleague always taps their fingers on the desk when they're deep in thought, or your friend has a particular laugh they use when they're genuinely amused versus when they're just being polite. These small details form the brushstrokes of your behavior blueprint. It's important to note that this process takes time. You can't create an accurate blueprint after just one or two interactions. It requires patience and consistent observation over various situations and time periods. Think of it as compiling a mosaic. Each interaction adds another piece to the overall picture. Once you've established a solid baseline, you'll be amazed at how much easier it becomes to spot deviations from the norm. These deviations are often the key to understanding what's really going on beneath the surface. It's like having a superpower that allows you to see subtle shifts invisible to the untrained eye. For instance, let's say you have a friend who's usually very talkative and animated. One day, you notice they're unusually quiet and their gestures are more subdued. Without a behavior blueprint, you might not think much of it. But with your baseline knowledge, this deviation stands out like a red flag, signaling that something might be amiss. Interpreting these deviations accurately is where the real skill comes in. It's not enough to simply notice that something's different. You need to understand what that difference might mean. This is where the situational prism we discussed in the previous chapter comes into play. By considering the context alongside the deviation from the baseline, you can form a more accurate hypothesis about what's really going on. Let's explore a real-life scenario to illustrate this point. Imagine you're a manager and one of your typically punctual employees starts coming in late several days in a row. Your behavior blueprint tells you this is unusual for them. Instead of immediately assuming they've become lazy or disinterested in their job, you use this information as a prompt to investigate further. Perhaps they're dealing with a personal issue, or maybe there's been a change in their commute. By noticing this deviation and seeking to understand it, you're in a much better position to offer support or find a solution. The applications of the behavior blueprint are virtually endless. In personal relationships, it can help you be more attuned to your loved one's needs and emotions. In professional settings, it can give you an edge in negotiations, team management, and customer relations. Even in casual social interactions, having this tool at your disposal can help you navigate conversations more skillfully and build rapport more easily. To truly master the behavior blueprint, practice is key. Start with people you interact with regularly, family members, close friends, or colleagues. Pay attention to their usual patterns of speech, body language, and behavior. Make mental notes, or even actual notes if you prefer, about what you observe. Over time, you'll find that creating these blueprints becomes second nature and you'll be able to establish baselines more quickly and accurately. As you become more proficient with the behavior blueprint, you'll discover that it's not just about observing others. It also increases your self-awareness. You'll start to recognize your own patterns and how they might be perceived by others. This self-knowledge is invaluable in developing your overall emotional intelligence and interpersonal skills. 
Remember, the goal of the behavior blueprint isn't to pigeonhole people or make inflexible assumptions. People are complex and can always surprise us. Instead, think of it as a flexible framework that helps you navigate the intricacies of human behavior with greater understanding and empathy. As we conclude our exploration of the behavior blueprint, you might be wondering about the intriguing concept of the comfort spectrum mentioned in the next chapter. What hidden truths might this mysterious tool reveal about people's innermost feelings and intentions? Prepare to delve even deeper into the subtle nuances of human behavior as we uncover the secrets of comfort and discomfort. Chapter 4, Comfort Spectrum. Imagine you're an expert musician able to hear the subtle nuances in a complex symphony that others might miss. In the world of human behavior, there's a similar symphony playing out all around us, one of comfort and discomfort. Welcome to the comfort spectrum, a powerful tool that will transform your ability to read people and understand their true feelings. But what exactly is this mysterious spectrum and why is it so crucial in the art of mind reading? At its core, the comfort spectrum is about recognizing and interpreting the myriad ways people express their level of ease or unease in any given situation. It's like having a finely tuned emotional barometer capable of detecting even the slightest shifts in a person's internal state. The importance of this concept in reading people cannot be overstated. When we understand someone's level of comfort, we gain invaluable insights into their honesty, their true feelings, and their openness to ideas or suggestions. It's like having a secret window into their inner world, one that reveals far more than words alone ever could. So how do we begin to perceive this invisible spectrum? It starts with keen observation and a willingness to look beyond the surface. Think of yourself as a detective, gathering clues from both verbal and nonverbal cues. These cues are like the individual notes in our behavioral symphony, each one contributing to the overall melody of comfort or discomfort. Let's start with verbal cues. These are the words and phrases people use, but also how they say them. A person who's comfortable might speak more freely, using a relaxed tone and open-ended statements. They might share personal anecdotes or ask questions out of genuine curiosity. On the other hand, discomfort might manifest in shorter responses, deflective language, or a tendency to change the subject. But the real magic happens when we tune into the nonverbal cues. These are the unspoken signals that our bodies send out, often without our conscious awareness. A comfortable person might lean in slightly during conversation, maintain easy eye contact, and have relaxed, open body posture. Their gestures might be smooth and natural. In contrast, signs of discomfort could include crossed arms, fidgeting, avoiding eye contact, or tense facial expressions. As you become more attuned to these cues, you'll start to notice patterns and combinations that tell a more complex story. For instance, someone might be saying all the right words, but their body language screams discomfort. This disconnect between verbal and nonverbal communication can be a powerful indicator of dishonesty or hidden feelings. But recognizing these cues is only the first step. The real skill lies in interpreting them accurately within the context of the situation. This is where our previous lessons on the situational prism and behavior blueprint come into play. By considering the context and the person's baseline behavior, you can form a more nuanced understanding of what their comfort level really means. For example, let's say you're in a business meeting and you notice one of your colleagues exhibiting signs of discomfort. They're fidgeting, avoiding eye contact, and giving short, clipped responses. Without context, you might assume they're being dishonest or hiding something. But what if you know this person is naturally introverted and finds group settings challenging? Suddenly, their behavior takes on a different meaning. Understanding the comfort spectrum isn't just about reading others. It's also about creating an environment where people feel at ease. When people are comfortable, they're more likely to be open, honest, and receptive to ideas. This skill can be invaluable in both personal and professional settings. So how can we promote comfort and openness in our interactions? It starts with empathy and awareness. Pay attention to the cues you're picking up 
and adjust your approach accordingly. If someone seems uncomfortable, you might try to put them at ease by matching their energy level, giving them more personal space, or shifting the conversation to a topic they're more comfortable with. Building trust is another crucial aspect of promoting comfort. This involves being consistent, showing genuine interest in others, and demonstrating reliability over time. When people trust you, they're more likely to feel comfortable in your presence, leading to more open and honest interactions. As you practice observing and interpreting the comfort spectrum, you'll find that it becomes second nature. You'll start to pick up on subtle cues that you might have missed before, giving you a deeper understanding of the people around you. This skill can help you navigate complex social situations, improve your relationships, and become a more effective communicator and leader. Remember, the goal isn't to manipulate people or invade their privacy. Instead, it's about developing a deeper empathy and understanding for others, allowing you to interact with them in a more meaningful and authentic way. The comfort spectrum is a tool for connection, not exploitation. As we conclude our exploration of the comfort spectrum, you might be curious about the intriguing concept of soothing signals mentioned in the next chapter. What hidden messages might these mysterious behaviors reveal about a person's inner state? Prepare to uncover a whole new layer of nonverbal communication as we delve into the fascinating world of self-soothing behaviors. Chapter 5, Soothing Signals have you ever noticed someone absent-mindedly playing with their hair during a tense conversation or rubbing their neck while mulling over a difficult decision? These seemingly innocuous actions might actually be revealing far more than you realize. Welcome to the world of soothing signals, a fascinating realm of nonverbal communication that can provide deep insights into a person's emotional state. But what exactly are these mysterious signals? and why are they so crucial in the art of reading people? At their core, soothing signals are self-comforting behaviors that people unconsciously engage in when they're experiencing stress, anxiety, or discomfort. They're like little windows into a person's inner world, offering glimpses of their true feelings, even when their words might say otherwise. The importance of recognizing these signals cannot be overstated. By identifying these subtle behaviors, you gain a powerful tool for understanding the underlying emotional state of those around you. It's like having a secret decoder ring for stress and discomfort, allowing you to pick up on feelings that might otherwise go unnoticed. So, what do these soothing signals look like in practice? They can take many forms, but some common examples include touching or rubbing the neck, playing with hair or jewelry, fidgeting with objects, or even subtle self-hugging gestures. These behaviors serve as a form of self-pacification, helping to calm the nervous system in moments of stress or uncertainty. But why do we engage in these behaviors? The psychological basis for soothing signals is deeply rooted in our evolutionary history. As infants, we seek comfort from our caregivers when we're distressed. As we grow older, we internalize these comforting behaviors unconsciously using them to self-soothe in stressful situations. It's like we're giving ourselves a little hug or pat on the back when we need it most. Understanding the context of these behaviors is crucial. Not every instance of hair twirling or neck rubbing indicates stress. This is where our previous lessons on the situational prism and behavior blueprint come into play. By considering the context and the person's baseline behavior, you can more accurately interpret what these soothing signals might mean in any given situation. For example, let's say you're in a business meeting and you notice a colleague repeatedly touching their neck while presenting a new idea. This could be a sign that they're feeling nervous or unsure about their proposal. However, if you know that this person habitually touches their neck while speaking, it might not indicate anything out of the ordinary. Context is key. The frequency and intensity of these behaviors can also provide clues about the severity of the stress or discomfort a person is experiencing. Occasional, mild soothing signals might indicate low-level stress or nervousness. But when these behaviors become more frequent or intense, it could signal a higher level of anxiety or discomfort. 
Recognizing these signals isn't just about observing others, it's about developing empathy and understanding. When you notice someone engaging in self-soothing behaviors, you have the opportunity to respond in a way that helps alleviate their discomfort. This could involve changing the subject, offering reassurance, or simply acknowledging their feelings. For instance, if you're having a difficult conversation with a friend and you notice them repeatedly rubbing their arms, a common self-soothing behavior, you might take a moment to check in with them. I notice you seem a bit uncomfortable. Would you like to take a break or talk about something else for a while? This kind of empathetic response can help create a more supportive environment and strengthen your relationships. In professional settings, recognizing soothing signals can be particularly valuable. As a leader or manager, being attuned to these behaviors can help you identify when your team members are feeling stressed or overwhelmed, even if they're not verbalizing it. This awareness allows you to address issues proactively, potentially heading off larger problems before they develop. It's important to note that the goal of recognizing soothing signals isn't to make people feel exposed or vulnerable. Rather, it's about developing a deeper understanding and empathy for those around you. Use this knowledge to create more supportive, comfortable environments where people feel safe and understood. As you become more adept at recognizing these signals, you'll likely start noticing them everywhere, in meetings, during casual conversations, even while watching interviews on TV. This heightened awareness can dramatically enhance your ability to read people and navigate social situations with greater skill and empathy. Remember, the key to mastering soothing signals is practice and patience. Start by observing these behaviors in low-stakes situations, perhaps among friends or family members. As you become more confident in your observations, you can apply this skill in more complex social and professional settings. By honing your ability to recognize and respond to soothing signals, you're adding another powerful tool to your mind-reading toolkit. This skill, combined with the others we've explored, will help you become a more perceptive, empathetic, and effective communicator. As we conclude our exploration of soothing signals, you might be intrigued by the mention of eye chronicles in the next chapter. What secrets might our eyes be revealing without our knowledge? Prepare to delve into the fascinating world of ocular communication as we uncover the hidden language of the eyes. Chapter 6, Eye Chronicles. They say the eyes are the windows to the soul, but what if they're more like a detailed storybook, chronicling our thoughts, emotions, and even our deepest secrets? Welcome to the fascinating world of Eye Chronicles, where every glance, blink, and subtle movement tells a tale that words often fail to express. But what exactly are these Eye Chronicles, and why are they so crucial in the art of reading people? At their core, Eye Chronicles are the myriad ways our eyes behave and change in response to our thoughts and emotions. They're like a silent narrator, constantly revealing bits and pieces of our inner world to those who know how to read them. The importance of understanding these ocular narratives cannot be overstated. Our eyes, unlike many other parts of our body, are directly connected to our brain and nervous system. This means they often react to our thoughts and feelings before we even have a chance to process them consciously. It's like having a direct line to someone's subconscious, offering glimpses of their true feelings and thoughts in real time. So what stories do our eyes tell? Let's start with one of the most basic yet revealing aspects of eye behavior, eye contact. The way we maintain or avoid eye contact can speak volumes about our emotional state and intentions. Steady, comfortable eye contact often indicates confidence and engagement. On the other hand, avoiding eye contact might suggest discomfort, dishonesty, or even submission in certain contexts. But the eye chronicles go much deeper than just eye contact. Have you ever noticed how your eyes move when you're trying to remember something? Or how they dart around when you're feeling nervous? These movements, often unconscious, are part of a complex system of eye behaviors that can reveal our cognitive processes and emotional states. For instance, in many Western cultures, looking up and to the left is often associated with accessing visual memories. 
while looking up and to the right might indicate constructing or imagining visual information. Of course, these patterns can vary among individuals and cultures, which is why it's crucial to consider them in conjunction with other behavioral cues and context. Then there's the fascinating world of pupil dilation. Our pupils aren't just responsible for regulating light, they also respond to our emotional arousal. When we're excited, scared, or even attracted to someone, our pupils tend to dilate. It's like our eyes are betraying our innermost feelings, even when we're trying to keep them hidden. Blink rate is another intriguing chapter in the Eye Chronicles. While we blink primarily to keep our eyes lubricated, our blink rate can change dramatically based on our emotional and cognitive state. Increased blinking might indicate stress or discomfort, while a decreased blink rate could suggest intense focus or even deception in some cases. Speaking of deception, the eyes are often considered one of the most reliable indicators when it comes to detecting lies. While no single eye behavior can definitively prove dishonesty, certain patterns can raise red flags. Rapid blinking, looking away at crucial moments, or excessive eye rubbing might all be signs that someone is not being entirely truthful. However, it's crucial to approach these interpretations with caution. Context is key, and what might be a sign of deception in one situation could be a normal behavior in another. This is where our previous lessons on the situational prism and behavior blueprint become invaluable. By considering the context and the person's baseline behavior, you can more accurately interpret what these ocular signals might mean. Understanding the Eye Chronicles isn't just about detecting deception or reading emotions. It's also about enhancing your ability to connect with others on a deeper level. When you're attuned to someone's eye behaviors, you can respond more empathetically and effectively in your interactions. For example, if you notice someone's gaze frequently drifting away during a conversation, it might indicate that they're feeling uncomfortable or disengaged. Instead of getting frustrated, you could try changing the subject or adjusting your approach to re-engage them. Similarly, if you notice someone's pupils dilating when discussing a particular topic, it might signal their genuine interest or excitement, encouraging you to explore that subject further. In professional settings, understanding eye chronicles can give you a significant advantage. In negotiations, for instance, being able to read your counterpart's eye behaviors can provide valuable insights into their thoughts and feelings, helping you adjust your strategy accordingly. In leadership roles, it can help you gauge your team's engagement and emotional state, allowing you to address issues before they become problems. As you delve deeper into the world of eye chronicles, you'll likely start noticing these subtle ocular behaviors everywhere in casual conversations, during meetings, even while watching movies or TV shows. This heightened awareness can dramatically enhance your ability to read people and navigate social situations with greater skill and empathy. Remember, the key to mastering eye chronicles is practice and patience. Start by observing eye behaviors in low-stakes situations, perhaps among friends or family members. As you become more confident in your observations, you can apply this skill in more complex social and professional settings. By honing your ability to read and interpret eye chronicles, you're adding another powerful chapter to your mind-reading toolkit. This skill, combined with the others we've explored, will help you become a more perceptive, empathetic, and effective communicator. As we conclude our exploration of eye chronicles, you might be intrigued by the mention of tonal shifts in the next chapter. What hidden messages might be lurking in the cadence and pitch of our voices? Prepare to tune your ears to a whole new frequency of communication as we uncover the secret language of vocal tones. Tonal shifts. Imagine you're listening to a beautiful symphony. The melody is captivating, but it's the subtle shifts in tone that truly bring the piece to life. In the grand orchestra of human communication, our voices play a similar role. Welcome to the world of tonal shifts, where the music of our voices reveals far more than the words we speak. But what exactly are these tonal shifts, and why are they so crucial in the art of reading people? At their core, tonal shifts are the subtle changes in our vocal characteristics 
that occur as our emotional states fluctuate. They're like the hidden notes in a musical score, often overlooked but profoundly impactful in conveying the true meaning of our communication. The importance of understanding these vocal nuances cannot be overstated. While we often focus on the content of what someone is saying, the way they say it can provide a wealth of information about their emotional state, intentions, and even the truthfulness of their words. It's like having access to a secret language that's constantly being broadcast alongside our verbal communication. So, what comprises this hidden language of the voice? Let's start with one of the most basic yet revealing aspects, pitch. The pitch of our voice, or how high or low it sounds, can fluctuate based on our emotional state. Have you ever noticed how your voice might go up when you're excited or nervous, or drop lower when you're trying to be authoritative or serious. These changes in pitch are like little emotional signposts, guiding us towards a deeper understanding of the speaker's state of mind. But tonal shifts go far beyond just pitch. The speed at which we speak, known as tempo, can also reveal a lot about our emotional and mental state. Rapid speech might indicate excitement or anxiety, while a slower pace could suggest thoughtfulness, hesitation, or even deception in some cases. It's like the rhythm section of our vocal orchestra setting the pace for our emotional expression. Then there's the volume of our speech. While sometimes a loud voice is just a loud voice, changes in volume can often indicate shifts in emotional intensity. A sudden increase in volume might signal anger or enthusiasm, while a drop in volume could suggest insecurity or a desire for privacy. It's like the dynamic markings in a musical score, indicating the emotional intensity of the performance. Another fascinating aspect of tonal shifts is the quality of the voice itself. This includes elements like breathiness, resonance, and vocal fry. A breathy voice might indicate attraction or submission, while a more resonant tone could suggest confidence or authority. These qualities add depth and texture to our vocal expression, much like the timbre of different instruments in an orchestra. Understanding these tonal shifts isn't just about detecting emotions or uncovering deception. It's also about enhancing your own communication effectiveness. By being aware of your own vocal tone and how it affects others, you can adjust your communication style to build better rapport and convey your messages more effectively. For instance, if you're trying to calm someone who's upset, Matching their tone and gradually lowering your pitch and slowing your tempo can help guide them towards a calmer state. It's like leading a dance, gently guiding your partner towards a more harmonious rhythm. In professional settings, understanding tonal shifts can give you a significant advantage. In negotiations, for example, being able to detect stress or uncertainty in your counterpart's voice can provide valuable insights helping you adjust your strategy accordingly. In leadership roles, it can help you gauge your team's engagement and emotional state, allowing you to address issues before they become problems. But how can we use our understanding of tonal shifts to promote honesty and openness in our interactions? One effective technique is to create a vocal environment that encourages trust and comfort. By maintaining a steady, calm tone, you can help others feel more at ease making them more likely to open up and communicate honestly. Another powerful strategy is mirroring. By subtly matching the tone and rhythm of the person you're speaking with, you can create a sense of harmony and rapport. It's like finding the right harmony to complement their melody, creating a more resonant and meaningful interaction. As you become more attuned to tonal shifts, you'll likely start noticing these subtle vocal behaviors everywhere in casual conversations, during phone calls, even while watching interviews or podcasts. This heightened awareness can dramatically enhance your ability to read people and navigate social situations with greater skill and empathy. Remember, the key to mastering tonal shifts is practice and patience. Start by observing vocal behaviors in low-stakes situations, perhaps among friends or family members. As you become more confident in your observations, you can apply this skill in more complex social and professional settings. By honing your ability to read and interpret tonal shifts, you're adding another powerful instrument to your mind-reading orchestra. 
This skill, combined with the others we've explored, will help you become a more perceptive, empathetic, and effective communicator. As we conclude our exploration of tonal shifts, you might be intrigued by the mention of the silent guard in the next chapter. What secrets might be hiding behind the subtle movements of our mouths? Prepare to uncover a whole new dimension of nonverbal communication as we delve into the fascinating world of mouth cues and their hidden meanings. Chapter 8, Silent Guard. In the grand theater of human communication, we often focus on the words spoken and the eyes that express. But there's another player on this stage, one that often goes unnoticed, yet holds the power to reveal our deepest secrets. Welcome to the world of the silent guard, where the subtle movements of our mouths can speak volumes without uttering a single word. But what exactly is this silent guard, and why is it so crucial in the art of reading people? At its core, the silent guard refers to the various ways our mouths behave when we're trying to hold something back. It's like a sentinel at the gate of our thoughts, sometimes betraying the very secrets it's meant to protect. The importance of understanding these mouth cues cannot be overstated. While we've learned to control our words and even our facial expressions to a certain extent, the mouth often acts as a final bastion of truth. It's like a leak in a dam, allowing trickles of information to seep through even when we're trying our hardest to keep everything contained. So, what does this silent guard look like in action? It can manifest in various ways, from the most subtle lip touch to a full-blown mouth cover. Have you ever noticed someone lightly touching their lips while listening to a question they'd rather not answer? Or perhaps you've seen someone cover their mouth entirely when hearing shocking news. These are just a few examples of how the silent guard operates. But why do we engage in these behaviors? The psychological basis for mouth covering is deeply rooted in our evolutionary history. As children, we often covered our mouths when we said something we shouldn't have or when we were trying to hide something from our parents. As adults, this instinct remains, albeit in more subtle forms. It's like our body's way of trying to physically stop words from escaping, even when we're not actually speaking. It's important to note that these behaviors can vary significantly across cultures and individuals. In some cultures, covering the mouth might be a sign of politeness or modesty, while in others, it could indeed indicate deception. This is where our previous lessons on the situational prism and behavior blueprint become invaluable. Context is key when interpreting these signals. So how can we use our understanding of the silent guard to identify when someone might be withholding information? One of the most common signs is the subtle lip touch. This might look like someone briefly bringing their finger to their lips as if they're considering what to say next. In reality, they might be unconsciously trying to hold back information they don't want to share. Full mouth covering, on the other hand, often indicates a stronger desire to withhold information or a more intense emotional reaction. If someone covers their mouth upon hearing news or being asked a question, it could suggest they're trying to suppress a strong reaction or prevent themselves from blurting out something they'd rather keep hidden. However, it's crucial to approach these interpretations with caution. Not every instance of touching the mouth or covering it indicates deception or information withholding. This is where the art of differentiating between deception and other motives comes into play. For instance, someone might touch their mouth because they're deep in thought or cover it because they're embarrassed about their teeth. Context is key. If someone covers their mouth while laughing, it's probably not because they're lying. Unless, of course, the laughter itself is forced or inappropriate for the situation. To accurately interpret these signals, it's essential to combine mouth cues with other behavioral indicators we've discussed in previous chapters. Look for clusters of behaviors rather than isolated incidents. If someone is touching their mouth while also avoiding eye contact and showing signs of nervous fidgeting, you might have a stronger case for suspecting deception or information withholding. Understanding the silent guard isn't just about detecting deception. 
It's about enhancing your overall ability to read people and communicate more effectively. When you're attuned to these subtle mouth behaviors, you can respond more empathetically and skillfully in your interactions. For example, if you notice someone lightly touching their lips while you're asking them for their opinion on a sensitive topic, you might recognize that they're uncomfortable sharing their true thoughts. Instead of pressing further, you could try rephrasing your question or approaching the topic from a different angle to make them feel more at ease. In professional settings, being aware of the silent guard can give you a significant advantage. In negotiations, for instance, noticing when your counterpart is subtly touching their mouth might indicate that they're holding back information or considering whether to accept your offer. This awareness can help you adjust your strategy accordingly. As you become more attuned to the silent guard, you'll likely start noticing these subtle mouth behaviors everywhere, in casual conversations, during meetings, even while watching interviews on TV. This heightened awareness can dramatically enhance your ability to read people and navigate social situations with greater skill and empathy. Remember, the key to mastering the interpretation of the silent guard is practice and patience. Start by observing mouth behaviors in low-stakes situations, perhaps among friends or family members. As you become more confident in your observations, you can apply this skill in more complex social and professional settings. By honing your ability to read and interpret the silent guard, you're adding another powerful tool to your mind-reading toolkit. This skill, combined with the others we've explored, will help you become a more perceptive, empathetic, and effective communicator. As we conclude our exploration of the silent guard, you might be intrigued by the mention of asymmetrical faces in the next chapter. What hidden truths might be revealed by the subtle imbalances in our facial expressions? Prepare to uncover a whole new dimension of nonverbal communication as we delve into the fascinating world of facial asymmetry and its profound implications for understanding human behavior. Chapter 9, Asymmetrical Faces Have you ever looked at someone's face and felt that something was slightly off but couldn't quite put your finger on what it was? Welcome to the intriguing world of asymmetrical faces, where the subtle imbalances in our expressions can reveal far more than we might realize. But what exactly are these asymmetrical faces, and why are they so crucial in the art of reading people? At their core, Asymmetrical faces refer to the discrepancies between the left and right sides of our facial expressions. It's like a silent tug of war between our emotions, played out on the canvas of our faces. The importance of understanding these facial imbalances cannot be overstated. While we've learned to control our words and even many of our expressions, the subtle asymmetry in our faces often betrays our true feelings. It's like a crack in our emotional armor allowing glimpses of our inner turmoil to seep through. So what does this facial asymmetry look like in action? It can manifest in various ways, from a slightly raised eyebrow on one side to a lopsided smile. Have you ever noticed someone smiling, but only one side of their mouth turns up? Or perhaps you've seen someone frown, but one eyebrow is more furrowed than the other. These are just a few examples of how asymmetrical faces operate. But why do our faces behave this way? The science behind facial asymmetry is fascinating. Our faces are naturally slightly asymmetrical due to genetic factors and environmental influences. However, when it comes to expressions, the asymmetry becomes more pronounced due to the way our brains process emotions. The left side of our face is controlled by the right hemisphere of our brain, which is associated with emotions and creativity. The right side of our face is controlled by the left hemisphere, which is linked to logic and language. This neurological split can lead to different parts of our face expressing different emotions simultaneously, especially when we're experiencing conflicting feelings. This is where the detection of deceit comes into play. When someone is trying to hide their true feelings or is being dishonest, their face often betrays them through asymmetrical expressions. It's like their genuine emotion is leaking through on one side of their face, while the other side maintains the facade they're trying to present. For instance, 
A genuine smile, often called a Duchenne smile, involves both the mouth and the eyes and is typically symmetrical. A forced or fake smile, on the other hand, often only engages the mouth and may be asymmetrical. It's like the face is unable to fully commit to the deception, resulting in a lopsided expression. Timing and duration of asymmetry are also crucial factors to consider. Genuine expressions tend to appear and disappear smoothly and relatively quickly. Forced expressions, however, may appear suddenly, last for an unnaturally long time, or disappear abruptly. It's like watching a poorly choreographed dance, where the movements don't quite flow naturally. However, it's important to approach these interpretations with caution. Not every instance of facial asymmetry indicates deceit. This is where the art of interpreting conflicting emotions comes into play. Sometimes, asymmetry simply indicates that a person is experiencing mixed feelings about a situation. For example, someone might display a mixture of happiness and sadness when receiving bittersweet news. One side of their face might show signs of a smile, while the other side exhibits a slight frown. This isn't necessarily deceit, but rather a genuine expression of complex emotions. To accurately interpret these signals, it's essential to combine your observations of facial asymmetry with other behavioral indicators we've discussed in previous chapters. Look for clusters of behaviors rather than isolated incidents. If someone is displaying facial asymmetry while also avoiding eye contact and showing signs of nervous fidgeting, you might have a stronger case for suspecting deceit or internal conflict. Understanding asymmetrical faces isn't just about detecting deception. It's about enhancing your overall ability to read people and communicate more effectively. When you're attuned to these subtle facial imbalances, you can respond more empathetically and skillfully in your interactions. For instance, if you notice someone displaying asymmetrical expressions while discussing a sensitive topic, you might recognize that they're experiencing conflicting emotions. Instead of pushing for a clear-cut answer, you could acknowledge the complexity of the situation and offer a more nuanced discussion. In professional settings, being aware of asymmetrical faces can give you a significant advantage. In negotiations, for example, noticing when your counterpart displays facial asymmetry might indicate that they're not fully convinced by their own arguments or offers. This awareness can help you adjust your strategy accordingly. As you become more attuned to asymmetrical faces, you'll likely start noticing these subtle facial imbalances everywhere, in casual conversations, during meetings, even while watching interviews on TV. This heightened awareness can dramatically enhance your ability to read people and navigate social situations with greater skill and empathy. Remember, the key to mastering the interpretation of asymmetrical faces is practice and patience. Start by observing facial behaviors in low-stakes situations, perhaps among friends or family members. As you become more confident in your observations, you can apply this skill in more complex social and professional settings. By honing your ability to read and interpret asymmetrical faces, you're adding another powerful tool to your mind-reading toolkit. This skill, combined with the others we've explored, will help you become a more perceptive, empathetic, an effective communicator. As we conclude our exploration of asymmetrical faces, you might be intrigued by the mention of fleeting glimpses in the next chapter. What hidden truths might be revealed in the blink of an eye? Prepare to uncover a whole new dimension of nonverbal communication as we delve into the fascinating world of microexpressions and their profound implications for understanding human behavior. Chapter 10, Fleeting Glimpses. Have you ever had the feeling that you've caught a glimpse of something important only to have it vanish before you could fully grasp it? In the world of human expression, these momentary flashes can hold the key to understanding people's deepest emotions. Welcome to the realm of fleeting glimpses, where the briefest of moments can reveal the most profound truths. But what exactly are these fleeting glimpses, and why are they so crucial in the art of reading people? At their core, these glimpses are like tiny windows into the soul, opening for just a fraction of a second before slamming shut again. 
They're the facial expressions that flash across someone's face so quickly that you might doubt whether you saw them at all. The importance of catching and interpreting these fleeting moments cannot be overstated. While we've learned to control our words and even many of our longer-lasting expressions, these lightning-fast reactions often bypass our conscious control. It's like catching a glimpse behind the curtain of someone's carefully constructed persona, revealing the raw emotion underneath. So, what do these fleeting glimpses look like in action? They can manifest as a quick flash of anger in the eyes, a momentary downturn of the mouth in sadness, or a brief widening of the eyes in surprise. These expressions might last for only a fraction of a second, typically between 115 to 125 of a second, before disappearing, often replaced by a more socially acceptable expression. But why do our faces behave this way? The nature of these fleeting expressions is rooted in our evolutionary history. Our emotions evolved long before our ability to speak, and these quick expressions were crucial for rapid communication within social groups. Even now, in our modern world of complex language, these primal expressions continue to leak through our carefully constructed facades. What makes these fleeting glimpses particularly fascinating is their universality. Research has shown that certain basic emotions, happiness, sadness, anger, fear, disgust, surprise, and contempt are expressed in the same way across all cultures. It's like we're all speaking the same emotional language, even if just for a split second. Now, you might be wondering how it's possible to catch these lightning-fast expressions. After all, they're gone in the blink of an eye. The key lies in training your perception. It's like learning to spot a rare bird. At first, you might miss it entirely, but with practice, you'll start to catch glimpses more and more often. One technique for honing this skill is to practice with slow-motion videos. Start by watching emotional scenes from movies or TV shows in slow motion, paying close attention to the actors' faces. As you become more adept, gradually increase the speed until you can spot these fleeting expressions in real time. In today's digital age, technology can also be a powerful ally in detecting these fleeting glimpses. There are now computer programs and apps designed to analyze facial expressions frame by frame helping to identify micro-expressions that the human eye might miss. While these tools can be helpful, remember that they're no substitute for human intuition and understanding of context. Speaking of context, it's crucial to interpret these fleeting glimpses within the broader situation. A flash of anger during a business negotiation might mean something very different from the same expression during a friendly chat. This is where the concept of emotional leakage comes into play. These brief expressions are often our true emotions leaking through our composed exterior. To truly master the art of reading these fleeting glimpses, it's essential to combine them with the other cues we've discussed in previous chapters. A micro-expression of disgust, combined with a subtle mouth cover and averted gaze, might indicate a stronger reaction than any of these signals alone. As you become more attuned to these fleeting glimpses, you'll likely start noticing them everywhere, in casual conversations, during meetings, even while watching interviews on TV. This heightened awareness can dramatically enhance your ability to read people and navigate social situations with greater skill and empathy. Remember, the goal isn't to use this knowledge to manipulate or exploit others. Instead, Understanding these fleeting expressions can help you respond more empathetically and effectively in your interactions. If you catch a glimpse of sadness on a friend's face when they're insisting they're fine, you might know to offer more support. In a professional setting, noticing a flash of surprise during negotiations might indicate that your offer was unexpected, giving you valuable information for your next move. By honing your ability to catch and interpret these fleeting glimpses, you're adding a powerful tool to your mind-reading toolkit. It's like developing a superpower, the ability to see the unseen and understand the unspoken. This skill, combined with the others we've explored, will help you become a more perceptive, empathetic, and effective communicator. As we conclude our exploration of fleeting glimpses, 
you might be intrigued by the mention of inconsistent echoes in the next chapter. What hidden truths might be revealed when words and actions don't quite align? Prepare to uncover a whole new dimension of human behavior as we delve into the fascinating world of inconsistencies and their profound implications for understanding people's true intentions and feelings. Chapter 11, Inconsistent Echoes. Have you ever had the feeling that something just doesn't add up? Like when someone's words say one thing, but their body language tells a completely different story? Welcome to the intriguing world of inconsistent echoes, where the dissonance between what people say and do can reveal volumes about their true thoughts and intentions. But what exactly are these inconsistent echoes, and why are they so crucial in the art of reading people? At their core, these echoes are like ripples in a pond that don't quite match the stone that was thrown. They're the subtle, and sometimes not so subtle, contradictions between a person's verbal and nonverbal communication that can hint at deeper truths lurking beneath the surface. The importance of detecting these inconsistencies cannot be overstated. While we've learned to carefully choose our words, our bodies often have a mind of their own, betraying our true feelings and intentions. It's like watching a poorly dubbed movie, where the words and the mouth movements just don't sync up. So, what do these inconsistent echoes look like in action? They can manifest in countless ways. Perhaps you've noticed someone vehemently denying they're angry, while their clenched fists and reddening face tell a different story. Or maybe you've observed a colleague enthusiastically agreeing to take on a new project, all while their body seems to shrink away, as if trying to physically distance themselves from the commitment. These inconsistencies aren't always dramatic. Sometimes they're as subtle as a slight shake of the head while saying yes, or a momentary frown flashing across the face while insisting everything is fine. It's in these small discrepancies that we often find the most revealing insights. But why do we exhibit these behavioral inconsistencies? Often, it's because our conscious mind is trying to present one image while our subconscious feelings leak through in our nonverbal cues. It's like our body is engaged in a quiet rebellion against the words we're speaking, unable to fully commit to the deception. Understanding these inconsistencies is like learning to read between the lines of human communication. It allows us to pick up on the unspoken nuances that often contain the real message. This skill can be invaluable in both personal and professional settings, helping us navigate complex social situations with greater insight and empathy. One key aspect of mastering inconsistent echoes is learning to identify what we call hot spots in communication. These are the moments when the disconnect between verbal and nonverbal cues is most pronounced. It might be a fleeting expression that contradicts the spoken words, or a gesture that seems out of place with the sentiment being expressed. These hotspots aren't just isolated incidents. Often, they form patterns over time. For instance, you might notice that a friend always touches their nose when discussing a particular topic they claim doesn't bother them. Or perhaps a colleague consistently breaks eye contact when talking about deadlines they insist they can meet. Recognizing these patterns can provide valuable insights into a person's true feelings or areas of discomfort. So how can we use our understanding of inconsistent echoes to gain clarity in our interactions? One effective strategy is the art of tactful questioning. When you notice a discrepancy between someone's words and their nonverbal cues, you can gently probe for more information. The key is to do this in a non-confrontational way that encourages open communication. For example, if you notice a friend's smile doesn't quite reach their eyes when they say they're excited about an upcoming event, you might say something like, I sense there might be more to how you're feeling about this. Would you like to talk about it? This approach creates an opportunity for the person to express any reservations or mixed feelings they might have. In professional settings, understanding inconsistent echoes can be particularly valuable. In negotiations, for instance, noticing when your counterpart's words and body language don't align can give you crucial insights into their true position or areas where they might be willing to compromise. 
As you become more attuned to these inconsistent echoes, you'll likely start noticing them everywhere, in casual conversations, during meetings, even while watching interviews on TV. This heightened awareness can dramatically enhance your ability to read people and navigate social situations with greater skill and empathy. Remember, the goal isn't to use this knowledge to catch people out or expose their inconsistencies in a way that makes them uncomfortable. Instead, understanding these echoes can help you respond more empathetically and effectively in your interactions. It's about creating opportunities for more honest, open communication and deeper understanding. By honing your ability to detect and interpret inconsistent echoes, you're adding another powerful tool to your mind-reading toolkit. It's like developing a finely tuned antenna for the subtle discrepancies in human communication. This skill, combined with the others we've explored, will help you become a more perceptive, empathetic, and effective communicator. As we conclude our exploration of inconsistent echoes, you might be wondering how all these skills we've discussed come together to create a truly proficient mind-reader. What does it take to become a true master of understanding human behavior? Prepare to embark on the final stage of your journey as we delve into the art of synthesizing all these skills into a cohesive, powerful ability to read and understand people like never before. Chapter 12, Becoming a Mind-Reading Pro. Congratulations. You've reached the final chapter of our journey into the fascinating world of mind-reading. As we stand at the summit of this mountain of knowledge, let's take a moment to reflect on how far you've come and the incredible vistas that now stretch out before you. Throughout this book, we've explored a myriad of techniques and concepts that, when mastered, can give you an almost superhuman ability to understand the people around you. From the situational prism that helps you contextualize behavior, to the silent guard that reveals hidden thoughts, to the fleeting glimpses that expose raw emotions, you now possess a toolkit that would make even the most skilled detective envious. But what does all this mean for you in practical terms? How can these newfound skills empower you in your daily life? First and foremost, you'll likely notice a significant boost in your confidence during social interactions. Armed with the ability to read subtle cues and understand the unspoken dynamics at play, you'll find yourself navigating social situations with a newfound ease. That party that once seemed daunting, it's now an opportunity to practice your skills and connect more deeply with others. That important business meeting, it's a chance to gain insights that others might miss, giving you a distinct advantage. Your ability to understand others will be dramatically enhanced. You'll find yourself picking up on the subtle nuances of communication that most people miss. A slight change in tone, a fleeting expression, an inconsistent gesture, all of these will now speak volumes to you. It's like suddenly being able to hear a frequency that was always there but previously inaudible to you. This enhanced understanding won't just make you a better observer, it will transform your relationships. In your personal life, you'll be able to connect with friends and loved ones on a deeper level. You'll notice when someone is holding back their true feelings, allowing you to offer support even when they don't explicitly ask for it. You'll be able to navigate conflicts more skillfully, understanding the root causes of disagreements and finding ways to address them that satisfy all parties. In your professional life, these skills will prove equally valuable. Negotiations will take on a new dimension as you read between the lines of what's being said. You'll be better equipped to motivate and lead teams, understanding the unspoken concerns and aspirations of your colleagues. Client interactions will become more fruitful as you pick up on subtle cues that indicate their true needs and desires. But perhaps the most exciting aspect of your new abilities is what they allow you to achieve. You'll find yourself able to read nonverbal cues with an accuracy that might seem almost magical to others. Your situational awareness will be heightened, allowing you to pick up on the mood of a room the moment you enter it. You'll be able to detect deception, understand complex emotional states, and navigate social dynamics with a skill that sets you apart. And here's the truly exciting part. This is just the beginning. 
As you continue to practice and refine these skills, you'll find that they become more and more effortless. What once required conscious effort will become second nature. You'll find yourself instinctively picking up on cues and understanding situations without even realizing you're doing it. This mastery through repetition is where the real magic happens. As your skills become more ingrained, you'll be able to focus less on the individual techniques and more on the holistic picture they paint. It's like learning to play an instrument. At first, you have to think about each individual note, but with practice, you can focus on the music as a whole. As you continue to refine your skills, you'll discover new nuances and subtleties that this book has only hinted at. Each interaction becomes an opportunity to learn and grow, to fine-tune your abilities and deepen your understanding of human nature. And now, dear reader, we come to the true payoff of this journey. The skills you've learned in this book aren't just party tricks or ways to gain advantage over others. They are, at their core, tools for deepening empathy and understanding. By learning to read others more accurately, you've also learned to connect with them more profoundly. In a world that often feels disconnected and misunderstood, you now have the ability to bridge gaps, to see beyond the surface, and to truly understand the people around you. You have the power to create more meaningful connections, to resolve conflicts more effectively, and to bring more empathy and understanding into every interaction. This is the true gift of mind reading, not the ability to manipulate or exploit, but the power to understand and connect. As you go forward from here, armed with these skills and insights, remember that with great power comes great responsibility. Use your abilities to make the world a little bit better, one interaction at a time. You've come a long way from the person who first opened this book. You're now equipped with a set of skills that can transform your personal and professional life. But more than that, you have the potential to be a force for understanding and empathy in a world that sorely needs it. So go forth, practice your skills, and remember, in every interaction, in every conversation, you have the opportunity to not just read minds, but to touch hearts and change lives. However, truly mastering these skills requires more than just understanding others. It demands a deep comprehension of your own emotional landscape and thought processes. This is where many stumble, unable to fully harness the power of their newfound abilities. But what if there was a way to overcome this final hurdle, to truly unlock your full potential and transform every aspect of your life? The answer lies in mastering the art of emotional intelligence and critical thinking. For the ultimate guide to achieving this transformation and making the most of the mind-reading skills you've just learned, you need to dive into the audiobook, High EQ Critical Thinking, How to 10X Your Emotional Intelligence Overnight. Tap the center of the video now to continue your transformation journey.